Welcome to Kickstarter Radio. I'm your host, Lipstick Paddy, and today we are looking at the Valley of the Dead King. This is a class guide or a role guide <clears throat> so that if you're having a game of uh, Explore It um, and you've got anyone coming around to play, you can send them a video to explain all of the classes in each of the sec sections, whether it is Striker, Healer, Assist, Sapper, Utility, or even a dual class if you want to make the game a little bit easier. And in the description of this video will be the links to get all of the sections um, for easy, for you to find them very easy. And if you like the video content, please give it a thumbs up. And if you see any errors in today's video, please put them in the comments below and I'll make sure it gets pinned at the top. So you can check the comments for the pins if there's any errata to anything said in this video. Today we're looking at assists. Now, assists are all about helping the party out, buffing their abilities, increasing the strength of their attacks. Some assists are healers, others are tanks, but they all focus on helping their group in a variety of ways. Now then, the Guardian. Oh, my favourite class, the Guardian. <laughs> this guy's the tank. He's the tank that I would choose. The Minstrel. What's a healer doing in here? Yeah, he's like a bard. Nomad, probably the one that I wouldn't have in my party. And the Weaponsmith, hmm, that's an interesting name. We'll find out all about him in today's video. <laughs> Guardian, this is so exciting. Oh, so exciting, the Guardian, right. Nav 2, good, good beginning for exploration. Exploration 1, not good for finding gold. Survivability 2, not bad. HP 7, pretty high. Energy, really good. Attack, base attack 1, rubbish. Defense 3, wow. That's the highest base damage, base defense you'll get. To me, I'm your shield. So the Guardian can defend allies, reflect incoming damage, and... Um, their base attack is called Cleave. It damages health. It's, cleave is just a name. It's not special. It doesn't attack multiple enemies. It's just called Cleave. <laughs> and uh, and that, that's it. Anyway. Uh, first ability then. Mastery Shield. is uh, Starts off at Master, Mastery Shield Ally. It's called. It starts off at rank one, costs one to use. The Guardian chooses an attack that shields an ally this round. The damage is defended by half of your shield ally rank. It's called shield ally, not master shield ally. My notes here are a bit kaplunk. Anyway, you can use this ability once per round per half defend rank. Um, that's at three at the minute, so it gets rounded down, so you can only use it once per uh, round. <laughs> if you start getting your defense up, though, you you can, as your defense builds up, though, you can start shielding more people. It does require more energy to do it. Uh, rank four, the Guardian uses this mastery outside of combat to shield the allies from spending by spending one energy by ally. So if you're taking any kind of damage outside of combat, the uh, Guardian can still help you. At rank seven, you will also be able to use defend, which is your defensive attack, sorry, de defense ability, or your cleave attack whilst using this ability. So you can guard them and uh, use your basic attacks. At rank seven so yeah next ability is starts off at rank one it's called second master it's, it's the second mastery it's called reflected <laughs> and um, it costs two to cast reflected assault there we go i don't know why my notes for uh for the guardian's a bit upside down but it is right so the guardian reflects damage that she, he, or an ally has suffered this round. The damage is defended by the Reflected Assault rank plus your defensive rank. So at the beginning, um, 
Reflective Assault is one, your defense is three. So you will defend four, and that will be reflected back to the attacker. Nice. Now this damage is piercing. They can't defend it. And if you choose to reflect damage an ally has suffered, you take any remaining damage they would have suffered. So if let's say the dam you can you are gonna reflect four. Five damage comes in, you reflect four, and that one damage that's gonna be happening to an ally, you have to eat that. That's how it works. So you really need to start really getting your reflect up to kind of make sure you're not getting damage. Now at rank five, the target that you reflect from gains plus three boost to their next action. That is beautiful. So it's a really good buff. Now, if the Guardian fails to block any damage simply because, I don't know. <laughs> no, no, no. If you, if, you, if you fail to block any damage, that means, you know, like the example I gave you, where if it does five damage, you, you reflect forward and you eat that one. When you get hit, then you fail to block that one. Your next cleave does double damage. That's your base attack, but it's it's not very good. I mean, your attack is one. So let let's say you begin the game, you reflect from that first attack. You get one. What you lose one health damage. Well, whoopie do. Your next attack, you can do two damage. <laughs> but it does say twice. So the more attack you get, the stronger that's going to get. All right. I really do like the uh, guardian. I love the reflection. It's fantastic. And the shield is really good too. That's going to be a fantastic class to keep people with low health protected, especially um, when the healer is low on energy or something like that. The, you know, this is a perfect tank for me. I think it's a fantastic tank, the Guardian. The Minstrel. Hmm? Contemporary, tempor temporarily increase the ranks of all allies' abilities as well as improve all allies' skill rolls. Ooh. And affects combat, in combat, and out of combat. So, ooh. Now, the Minstrel, Navigation 1, not great for, for going around the map. Exploration 2, not bad for gold. Survive, survivability 1, food. You're going to need to buff that too. Because otherwise you're going to need to keep feeding the Minstrel. HP 4, terrible. Energy 7, that's very high. 4 HP. 4? That, it's like a healer. It's really low. <laughs> um, has a base attack of 1, base defense of 2. Take heart. Friends, we're almost there. Um, the Minstrel has a bribery proficiency. So anytime you get the chance to bribe in the game, this will lower the costs of the bribes. The Minstrel will be able to roll a die. And if they're successful, the price of the bribe will lower. Now, the first ability um, is starts at rank three and it costs two to cast. Now you select one of four, one of the four abilities, whether it's base attack, base defense, first ability that you get or the second ability that you get. Now it empowers the party, raises its rank for each ally by half your empower party rank, which is this skill. Starts off at rank three, so you half it and then you always round down, so it's only going to boost it by one. And that's for a number of rounds, which is equal to half of your slide stepping rank, which is your defend stat. So the more defensive stats you've got, the more it persists. It's like a, a song that you're doing. Your de defense is two, so you will empower everybody by two rounds at the beginning. Now, you must spend one energy each round to power the effect, 
and may use other abilities while this mastery continues throughout subsequent rounds. Again, it's like a, a big song that's going on. Only one instance of Empower Party may be active at any time. So TLDR, boost one ability by half of your attack ability rank by number of rounds equals half defendability. What's going on here? Let's look. <laughs> Basically, get your empower up, get your defensive stat up. That's the way to do it. TLDR, these notes. Second ability starts off at rank two. Ins inspiring Ballard. The, uh, let me just check my notes. That skill is one, yeah, it costs one. And I'm, I'm like looking at my eyes, it's missing information. It just costs one. Right, so what's this? Another song. <laughs> I bet the sheet. Now, you inspire your companions for a number of rounds equal to the rank of Inspiring Ballard, which is rank two at the minute. While active, you may re-roll a failed skill roll any ally just made and use your Ballard's rank in place of the skill's rank. Ooh, that's so good. So it lets you re-roll and um, let's say, for example, Inspiring Ballard is rank 5 and uh, re-rolling for an ability that's only four, well, you can use your rank five to roll that second one and kind of work in place of your of someone's lower ranks. That can really save the day, that. Fantastic. Now, it does say you must spend one energy each round to power this effect and may use other ability while it continues. This mastery may be used outside of combat during the skill or event phase to give the party a minus one bonus to their skill rolls. So that's going to be fantastic. At rank six, each ally gains access to a single healing surge. Using it ends the skill effect and heals the ally for half of the inspiring, ins inspiring ballad ranks um and it heals health and energy so that's not too bad will knock it out so good to do that on its final round isn't it so as you're singing the ballad um if, if it's the final round that's when you should blast the surge of healing and health I, I, it's so weird that the um the minstrel is in the assist. It's quite clearly a healer, isn't it? <laughs> no, no, it's because it's buffing. The the Impala part is a buff, and Inspiring Ballad is like uh, another buff, but it can it can push out a heal. But it's not as... The heal is nowhere near going to compete with the healers. No way. It's just... An, it's a good assist healing to the to the healers. But if you, if you don't like... If you don't like the look and you want someone that um, makes the dice better and gives you a re-roll, the, uh, the minstrel is key for taking the look out of the game. So yeah, that's a really good, a really good, uh, another good roll to have in your party. The Nomad can greatly boost the damage of another ally's single attack, so the buffers, and can also heal allies but not themselves. Mm. So the Nomad, Navigation 2, good. Exploration 2, good. Survivability 2, good. They've got 2-2-2, two, 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 Nomad's really good. HP 5, not great. Energy 5, not great. Attack 2, pretty good. Defense 2, pretty good. If there's anyone right through the middle, it's the Nomad. Let it begin, they say. First ability is Exploit Weakness. Cost of one, uh, you choose an ally's attack that damages an opponent's health this round and you boost that attack by the exploit weaknesses rank plus half of your attack rank, which is your ranged assault. It's your uh, attack, your basic attack. This increases the damage and it is not considered another attack. So 
um, good for making attack really big and getting past the defense of say a boss or something so yeah it could be good for that now at rank five of exploit weakness you can choose an ally once you've selected your ally you cannot select another when you use this power to boost your chosen allies attack the increase they receive is strengthened by one and this damage grows throughout the battle so again Exploit weakness is going to be great against those really hard enemies. Um, you're not going to be pushing damage out. You're basically adding your damage to your someone who's doing bigger damage, I guess, your DPS. And if you keep casting exploit weakness um, on your chosen ally, then the strength's going to keep going up and up and up and up. And up. So yeah, it's a grow. It's a growing ability. The next ability is First Aid. It costs one and you get rank one. You use your knowledge of medicine to heal an ally by First Aid's rank plus back away rank. That is your defensive ability. So at the beginning, First Aid is one. Your defense ability is two. So it's gonna do three health repair. That's pretty good. This mastery can, can be used outside of combat. That's really good. Three HP at the beginning for a non-healer. That's good. Now at rank four, you may also use back away, which is defense, or your ranged assault. So if you've if you've been really pushing attack for the nomad and you're doing that because it's increasing your exploit weakness, you can actually do medicine from your assault. Your, your basically attack ability. Interesting, isn't it? Because you, you're more likely going to be building that up. At rank seven, you may split this healing between any of your allies. But again, each target healed costs one. And you may not use first aid on yourself, unfortunately. Now it says, a HP heal is by the second mastery rank plus your defensive rank or your ranged base rank from a rank four. Yes, that's a TLDR. Yes, a little math statement. <laughs> so in short, build up your exploit weakness and your first aid. Build up your attack ability. When first aid becomes rank four, you can use your big attack ability to boost first aids healing all right so the nomad good stats across the board can buff people when they're fighting a boss very good for that and also can has a little bit of an interesting heal associated with the nomad what do i think of the nomad i think there's more interesting ones that i would play with my party um and I think, yeah, I'm not that interested in, in it, but the buff could be so good though. The buff could be so good. I don't know. The buff could be really good against a boss. You gotta think about that. The Weaponsmith can boost an ally's attack for an extended period of time, as well as deal health damage to an opponent, which can then cause energy damage Ooh. now the weaponsmith navigation one exploration two survive one hp six average energy four it's pretty low starts off with a base attack two and a defense of two now the start the first special ability is tempered weapon it begins with rank two and it costs two pretty high remember this character starts with energy four and uh, this costs two to do tempered weapon. So yeah, you're gonna need to fix that. <laughs> That's your kind of priority is to get your energy up with this character. Now you increase an ally's attack ability for a number of rounds equal to tempered weapon. Your ally's attack ability rank is boosted by half of your attack ability so your basic attack and then it says favored weapon rank is 
is that? <laughs> yeah, colour me confused though, I might know what I think Favoured weapon rank. Anyway, at rank five, you may also use your defense ability to masterwork armor for the round in which tempered weapon begins. A hero may only be affected by one tempered weapon at a time. Masterwork armor. So essentially, at rank five, you can use your defend ability instead of your attack ability to boost the attack of your ally. Uh, right. You can either... Well, it basically sounds like you, you can use your defense ability to, to make some armor for them. Right. You can either boost their armor or boost their attack. Right. I'm color, color me confused, though. Right, rank two, Keen Edge is your second ability. It costs one. Keen Edge deals health damage equal to the Keen Edge rank. That's your attack ability. So it's, and again, your favoured weapon rank. Am I missing something here from my notes about the weapons of if? Yeah, favoured weapon is your basic attack's name. <laughs> I'm just getting confused with the basic attack name. <laughs> right, Keen Edge. At rank 5, this attack deals damage. The opponent is maimed and losing 3 energy during the declaration phase of each round until the end of combat. So that's what maim does. It basically, you lose energy per round. So that's a good energy sapper. Now, its subsequent strikes with Keen Edge double the maimed amount up to two times. So, six energy for the first time. Twelve. No, no, no. It's... Yeah, three for the first, six energy for the second, twelve energy on the third strike. That's the maximum. So, you basically got an energy bleed on them that happens if you cast three keen edges on them so um so yeah it, it is pretty good for that so boost your attack and uh and put a bleed on them i, I think that there's more special for me there's more specialist peeps out there for reducing the energy that's you know that's the sappers so um this Again, the Weaponsmith for me, it's a little bit, you know, not quite a good one though. It's in the same camp as the Nomad for me. Nothing too special, but does have that buff ability and the interesting bleed ability. But, um, yeah, not for me, one that I'd want in my group. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please let me know in the comments down below what your favourite role is from this list. And let me know if you've got any tips for playing that role. Or even if I've got any mistakes, let me know in the comments and I'll make sure the errata gets pinned to the top of the comments. So thank you so much for watching. Please give the video a thumbs up. Think about subscribing and check the notes down below if you want links to other role guides that I do on the channel. So this is Kickstarter Radio. I'm your host, Lipstick Paddy. You take care, stay safe. Bye bye for now and have some amazing adventures in the Explorate system. Awesome souls. Thank you.